Hello everyone. I welcome you in the virtual classroom of business environment. We are discussing unit number 3 Indian tax system. Up till now we have completed the types of taxation in which we have seen that there are three types of taxes progressive, proportional and regressive. From this diagram the concept regarding progressive, proportional and regressive will be clear cut. This diagram shows that as your income increases, the tax rate increases that is a progressive tax system. If we talk about proportional tax system, then income increases and your tax rate remains constant that is a proportional tax system. And regressive means income increases and tax rate decreases that is a regressive tax system. From this you can say that regressive is the exact opposite to the progressive and proportional is in between both of the dimension progressive taxation and regressive taxation. I have repeated it because it will be of great help when we are discussing the canons of taxation. Now let us move towards the canons of taxation. The canon is a Latin word. The meaning of canon means the characteristics of good tax system. Let us have the introduction of the same canons of taxation. Canons of taxation refers to the administrative aspect of tax. See, the rules and regulations, the characteristics of good taxation is about how to manage a good tax in an economy. That is administrative aspect means how to manage a good tax in your economy. They relate to the rate means what should be the rate of tax. Second, what should be the amount of tax to be paid by the taxpayer and method of levy means what will be the tax incidence. What do you mean by tax incidence? Tax incidence means the timing and the responsibility means who will pay tax when. That is a tax incidence. That is known as a method of levy. How you will collect your tax uh, in form of cash or in form of check generally or in most of the cases taxes are always collected from the bank from the check only and uh, that will be a suitable way to create a white money in an economy so canons of taxation are concerned with the rate amount method of levy and collection of tax levy means how to take tax from the taxpayer then in other words, the characteristics or qualities which a good tax should possess are described as canons of taxation. As I told you earlier that canon simply means the qualities or the characteristics of good tax system only. It must be noted that canons refers to the qualities of an isolated tax. Isolated tax means how a tax should be. Means you are talking about single tax. You are not talking about the total tax system. See, if we talk about Indian economy, we are having so many types of taxes are there. Means GST is there, income tax is there, wealth tax is there, uh, import duty is there, export duty is there. These are the bunch of the tax. So, canons of taxation doesn't mean how and total tax system should be. Rather, canon simply means what a particular kind of tax should be. Uh, you can apply this canon to a particular tax like canon to the income tax, canon to the wealth tax and the like. You are not talking about the total or the multiple tax here. A good tax system should have proper combination of all kinds of taxes having different canons. See here total 8 characteristics are given and it is not compulsory that a tax is having all the 8 characteristics a particular tax might have might possess two or three characteristics and the other tax might possess another characteristics and what is a good tax system if we talk about the total tax system of an economy then it should be the collection of different types of tax which is having the different characteristics of good tax system according to adam smith there are four canons or maxims of taxation or the on the administrative side of public finance which are still recognized as classic. You must be knowing about this person Adam Smith. He is considered as the father of economics. Out of eight canons, the four basic canons are given by the Adam Smith and he is of opinion that 
to have a good side have of any text system uh, text should have uh, four characteristics in it adam smith is of opinion that at least four characteristics should be possessed by each and every text if you cannot have the total eight characteristics at least you should go for the four characteristics and that four canons are known as recognized as the classical canons of the text system now let us see in detail which are those canons this picture shows you that the canons are divided into two category first category is the canon given by adam smith and the second category is of canons given by professor best tables i would like to mention that this canons canons given by adam smith is known as the classic or the basic of the taxation system and best table has given the additional canons so according to adam smith four basic canons are canon of equality canon of certainty canon of economy and canon of convenience whereas if we talk about prof canons given by professor best table then canon of elasticity canon of productivity canon of simplicity and canon of expediency expediency simply means desirability now let us see in detail the first canon canon of equality the word itself suggests what do you mean by equality when you are giving equal treatment to the everyone it is known as equality when you are giving equal treatment to the everyone now you must be clear about what is equal treatment see if you are charging 10% to everyone you might think that this is equality because you are charging 10% to everyone equal treatment to everyone yes or no but no this is not the equality because when you are charging 10% to everyone you are not looking at their affordability one may not afford 10% whereas one is there who can afford 100% so rich is the poor is there and if you are giving equal treatment to unequal people it will result into inequality my words might be suppressing to you i am repeating again if you are giving equal treatment to unequal people it will result into inequality take the example one race is there and in that race two participants are there one who is physically handicapped and second who is having a full body a normal guy now the competition between this two person is valid is it equal no because physically handicapped and the normal guy is not an equal person they are unequal person and if you are keeping the norms for the race same then it will be an inequality you must give concession to the handicapped guy and you must not give any kind of concession to the normal guy getting it so when you are giving concession that normal guy should go for 100 meter and handicap should go for 50 meter then it will be an equality no doubt there is an unequal treatment but unequal treatment to unequal people will result into equality getting it that you are giving some reservation you are giving some kind of concession to the abnormal guy physically handicapped person so that uh, you want to put both on a same footing that is known as equality now let us see in detail every fiscal economist along with adam smith stress is that taxation must ensure justice there should be justice in your tax system the canon of equality or equity implies that the burden of taxation must be distributed equally or equitably equitably in relation to the ability of taxpayer see if government's need is 1 lakh of rupees for the sake of simplicity we are taking a figure 1 lakh of rupees then it should not be collected from only one person that will be also injustice yes or no so the total tax burden should be divided equally among a people now equally again you need to remind in your mind that it should be according to the ability of taxpayer 
it is not like that we are having 10 people in the population then 10 percent to the everyone no this is not like that it may be an distribution a proper distribution of the tax burden but the there is no equality in a tax payment equity or social justice demands that rich people should bear a heavier burden of tax and the poor a lesser burden see what is ability of the taxpayer rich is having the higher affordability because he is rich and the poor has a lower affordability so rich should be paid rich should be imposed higher tax and poor should be imposed lesser tax or no tax at all hence a tax system should contain progressive tax rates based on taxpayers ability to pay and sacrifice where if we talk about Indian tax system, uh, specifically income tax, then yes, in Indian income tax has the characteristics of canon of equality because we are exempting poor people from the tax payment and we are imposing the highest tax duty that is 30% on the rich class. So Indian tax system possess the canon of equality. Now let us discuss about the second canon canon of certainty certainty is a very common word you must be knowing to everyone it must be knowing to everyone certainty means everything should be crystal clear when everything is known to you in advance then we can say that there is a certainty taxation must have an element of certainty according to adam smith the tax which each individual is bound to pay ought to be certain and not arbitrary see whatever the tax liability of yours should be clear you must know how much tax you need to pay it should be certain not arbitrary what do you mean by arbitrary arbitrary simply means lump sum without any specific rule if you are charging your tax liability on a guess basis then it is, it is a arbitrary see if you are saying 10 percent then you are doing calculation of your income and then you are imposing 10 percent now suppose government is saying that you need to pay 50,000 then this amount is arbitrary 50,000 of what no doubt it is on income but how on and on what basis you have calculated 50,000 there is no particular rule for calculation of 50,000 is there so 50,000 will known as an arbitrary tax rate and in any tax system there should not be any arbitrary tax rates the time of payment the manner of payment the amount to be paid ought to be clear and plain to the contributor and to every other person see three things are mentioned here time of payment second is manner of payment and third one is amount to be paid i can say when to pay where to pay whom to pay and how much to pay these four wh questions related to tax should be clear to both of the parties one to the taxpayer and second to the government uh, how much to pay from the viewpoint of government we can say how much to collect so in advance it should be known to the taxpayer how much he is going to pay and it should be known to the government in advance how much government is gaining from a particular year from a in a particular year from a taxpayer this characteristics are highlighted here the certainty aspects of taxation are first certainty of effective incidence that is to say who shall bear the tax burden see here the word incidence come first time in your indian tax system unit in incidence means what means who will bear a tax burden you must be thinking that it is very much clear that taxpayer will be your tax burden but now the question is who will be the taxpayer if we talk about income tax then let it put aside we are not talking about income tax we are talking about the other taxes like gst is there uh, say for example uh, if we talk about gst then two parties are there one is a producer and second one is consumer then who will be your the tax burden you just guess that who is bearing the GST. Is it producer or is it consumer? Definitely it is a consumer. Yes or no? So first of all, it should be clear that who will bear that tax burden. Secondly, certainty of liability as to 
how much shall be the tax amount payable in particular period means taxpayer should know in advance that how much he need to pay as a tax this the taxpayer as well as the exchequer should unambiguously know the both of the parties whether government or a taxpayer both should know that how much tax is to be paid and how much tax is to be collected then the third one is certainty of revenue that is to say the government should be clear about the estimated collection of revenue from a given tax levy certainty of revenue means who is gaining from the tax system it is only government i have combined this both in the certainty of uh, certainty of liability but in certainty of liability we are thinking from the perspective of taxpayer and in certainty of revenue we are thinking from the viewpoint of government in certainty of liability the amount to be payable should be clear and in certainty of revenue amount to be gathered how much government will earn that is that should be clear so this is all about canon of certainty now let us discuss about the third canon given by adam smith canon of economy this principle suggests that the cost of collection collecting a tax should not be exorbitant but be the minimum extravagant tax collection machinery is not justified economy means what it should be affordable it should be cheaper one the, even the collection of tax is it is a activity in which government is incurring a kind of cost sometimes what happen that how much government is earning more than that government is expending in just collection of tax if we talk about india then to for collection of tax government needs to run a separate department for it they need to hire the employees who will be known as government employees highly paid employees secondly they should be trained personnel so training cost they need to incur fourthly a uh, physical property is required like real estate land and building for uh, office area is there and then they need to develop a system means how much to pay for different kinds of documents are there if uh, no one is paying then what is the penalty and the like so total system is to be created and in just creating this much a government is incurring cost so what canon of economy says that definitely we are incurring cost but cost should not be that much that it results into lesser tax gaining if it results into lesser tax gaining sometimes it will be just of the stage of time because government is not gaining from the tax collection so it is better not to co collect tax at all so the time of government and the time of tax payer both will be saved this principle suggests that the cost of collecting a tax should not be exorbitant exorbitant means it should not be too much but it should be the minimum one according to adam smith every tax has to be contrived as both to take and keep out of pocket of people as little as possible over and above what it brings into with the public treasury of the state see economy tax system should be economical from both point of view from the point of view of government i have told you earlier that government is also incurring certain kind of cost like cost of real estate cost of creation of tax system and the like simultaneously tax payer is also incurring cost what kind of cost they need to hire expert because he alone cannot understand that tax he alone cannot understand what is his tax liability so first of all he is hiring the expert fees of expert is there and secondly he is paying so in payment also there will be certain kind of processes will be there some documents are required so documentation charge will also be there uh, some are required stamp paper so that documentation charge is incurred by the taxpayer so what adam smith says that both parties in connection of tax means government and taxpayer should incur the minimum cost and there should be maximum gaining to the government point to the complex and ever changing nature of taxation laws in india means uh, in india we are having a constant changes in the indian tax laws 
government has to maintain elaborate tax collection machinery with a large staff of highly trained personnel involving highly administrative cost and inordinate delay in assessment and collection of tax see this paragraph shows that how many kinds of cost are incurred by the government that is for maintaining of a large staff highly trained personnel and highly administrative costs these are the few costs that is incurred by the government if we collect this whole cost then it sums up a very big amount which results into lesser collection for the government that is all about canons of econ canon of economy now let us discuss the fourth canon canon of convenience according to this canon tax should be collected in a convenient manner from the taxpayer means we should see the conveniency of the taxpayer say for example government is in need of money it doesn't mean it is compulsory to charge tax from the tax tax from the population it may be not convenient on their part so first of all we need to see are they able to pay the tax if yes then we need to see when they are able to pay the tax and third one how much they are able to pay the tax being a government when you are thinking about this three three questions from the viewpoint of taxpayer i am repeating my sentence again being a government if you are thinking about this three question from the viewpoint of taxpayer then there is a canon of conveniency then your tax possess a quality of convenience what adam smith says every tax ought to be levied at a time or in a manner in which it is most likely to be convenient for the contributor to pay it means you must decide the timing which is the most convenient to the taxpayer it is not like that sometimes what happen if you talk about salaried employees they are just earning on the first date they are having salary on their hand just because before they are enjoying their salary government is collecting tax you know tax deducted at source tds before a person enjoys the salary government is taking a part as a tax so sometimes it is not enjoying and it is not convenient to the taxpayer but uh, some economists say that this is a very convenient method that a taxpayer need not to hire the expert and automatically tax will be collected for example it is convenient to pay a tax when it is deducted at source from a salaried classes at a time of paying salaries if a uh, employee is earning very good amount then he might not be worried about tds but what about those employees who are earning less income and they are paying tds definitely they don't like it before because before enjoying their salary government is enjoying their salary what a joke so these are the four canons given by adam smith now we are moving towards the next four canons given by professor bastable the fifth canon is canon of elasticity taxation should be elastic in nature in a sense that more revenue is automatically fetched when income of people rises elasticity means what there should be change you know rubber is a elastic one means the size of rubber is a changeable it can be expanded and it can be contracted as well means tax system should having a characteristics by which the income of government can be increased and can be decreased as for the need of government this means that the taxation must have built in flexibility if you are having flexibility for increasing and decreasing the tax rate then there is a elasticity government's tax system should be elastic so that the tax burden may be either increased or decreased at different time as well as changes in demand for revenue see here also we need to think about two th we need to think about two things first is what is a need of government if the need of government is more then there should be higher tax rate and if the need of government is lower one then there should be lower tax rate there should not be rigid tax rate 
if you are charging 15% then in every situation every year you are charging 15% it should not be like this well we talk about government's need now let us talk about the economical situation if prosperity is there if boom period is there and definitely everyone's income is increasing in that scenario you can charge higher taxes but if recession is there means the the most of the people are losing their job people's income is decreasing so in that situation government should decrease the tax rate this should have the capacity to take steps quickly according to the time changes if the system is inelastic there will be monetary problem to the government means there should be room for the change in the tax rate if the tax rates are changeable then we can say it is an elastic taxation system otherwise not then canon of productivity this implies that a tax must yield sufficient revenue and not adversely affect the production in the economy see what do you mean by productivity productivity here we are thinking from the viewpoint of producers we are not thinking about income tax but we are thinking about the gst if there is a high income tax rate high there high tax rates are there then most part of profit will be taken away by government and there will be least amount to be reinvested in a business so expansion of business will be minimum production will be minimum and it will affect adversely to the productivity according to the professor bestible the tax should be of such a nature as to yield sufficient income to the government to pull on proper administration and to work for the welfare of the people here again we need to think from both point of view canon of productivity says that government should at least collect that much tax by which the welfareous activity the welfareous need of country should be met it is not like that just to increase production in a economy you are charging less tax because it will result into lesser revenue to government and by that way government may not be able to provide basic facility in an economy so again it will affect adversely to the productivity because from the lesser tax revenue government cannot give infrastructural facility and without infrastructural facility production cannot be increased so there should be balance in the collection of tax it should not be tax should not be collected that much that it will adversely affect to the profit of the entrepreneur and it should not be collected lesser that government is not able to provide welfare as economic welfare as facility in a economy tax gaining is important and every finance minister has to consider it before imposing a new tax if tax gaining is poor it can it cannot be good and productive tax yes definitely gaining means what the ultimate revenue of government after deducting your cost if it is more than it is a good tax otherwise not then next one is canon of simplicity this norm suggests that the tax rates and tax system ought to be simple and comprehensible and not to be complex and beyond the understanding of the layman here i would like to refer one of the statement given by this scientist scientist einstein once he told that it takes philosopher and mathematician to understand the tax i am repeating again it takes philosopher and mathematician to understand the tax so what is who is a philosopher philosophy is a subject which is full of complexity only an intellectual highly intelligent guy can understand the philosophy so to understand the tax is a very difficult task and secondly he told that mathematician to understand the tax why mathematician mathematician is a person who can understand the complex calculation so all in all what einstein is of opinion that taxes are always too much difficult to understand and too much difficult to calculate as well so simplicity means what 
tax system should be as simple as it can be understood by a common layman layman means a common man who is not having a very high educational qualification who is not very much highly intelligent but having an average iq a person can understand it then your tax system is a simple tax system this is what rarely found in a indian tax structure yes because if our tax system is very much simple then there will be no tax consultant in our economy there will be no need of tax consultant because everyone can be able to pay and understand it without the help of expert tax payer can understand the method of tax paying all information about tax should be clear cut and up to the date the tax payer should not be given any chance for tax evasion if the method is complicated naturally it will be it will inspire tax payer to do evasion yes if method is quite simple then it will be crystal clear there will be no chance of doing tax evasion but if method is complex one then some loopholes are there which cannot be picked up by the tax collector and by taking the advantage of that situation tax payer will do the tax evasion so canon of simplicity says that keep your tax system that much simple that there should be no chance of tax evasion and it should be clear and easily understandable to the common man then next canon is canon of diversity canon of diversity implies that there should be a multiple tax system of diverse nature rather than having a single tax system diversity means what uh, diversity means so many taxes should be there in a tax system there should not be only one tax why because if government keeps only one tax the rate of tax will be very much high and secondly say for example that we are having only income tax no other tax in india only income tax then there may be the rate of income tax running between 30% to 60% in present scenario 30% is payable by the rich person and by a, a middle class person 5 to 10 persons are payable but if there will be only one tax then 30% will be payable by the middle class and 60% will be payable by rich class you just imagine 30% by middle class on just one stroke government is taking a huge piece of their income then it will be pinching to the people that government is collecting this much from us so instead of having only one tax you should have multiple tax now from different different point of view if government is collecting tax it will not be it will not seem too big amount from the for too big amount to the tax payer uh, like say for example if if government is at all collecting 15000 rupees then if government is collecting 1000 from one tax 5000 from another tax 4000 from another tax and by four to five tax total government will collect 15000 then it will not be pinching amount but if government only in one stroke collects 15000 then 15000 seems bigger to the tax payer it will not be liked by tax payer so it is better to have a multiple tax system in a economy in former case means if multiple taxes are there tax payer will not be burdened with high incidence of tax in a aggregate incidence means there will be not only one incident to pay the tax there will be multiple incidence so the tax burden will be distributed then the last canon is canon of expediency expediency means desirability this suggests that a tax tax should be determined on the ground of its economic social and political expediency when you are deciding to collect tax then you should see from every point of view whether it is desirable from the political point of view from the social point of view and from the economical point of view if yes then you should collect it otherwise not for instance a tax on agriculture income lacks social political or administrative expediency in india and that is why the government of india had to discontinue it see if we talk about a uh, farmer situation in india they are not earning very good 
in context of their hard work so if government will charge tax from the farmer it will be a divine comedy to them like already they are not able to fulfill the basic need of their family and over and above government is charging tax so people will definitely resist it you know that most of the farmers are doing suicide in india so because of their financial condition so at least government should give tax concession should not collect tax at all from the farmers and that is what government is doing in india the agricultural income is 0% tax payable income means it is fully exempted how so much you are earning whether 1 rupee 1 lakh rupee or 1 crore rupee it is totally exempted because it is not desirable from the uh, viewpoint of farmer to pay the tax so that is canon of expediency here the canon of taxation got over and from next lecture we will see direct tax and indirect tax